Hey everyone, it is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Tuesday, November 13th, here with a midweek market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets and the current market environment. So we're going to jump right in here with the S&P 500 cash market weekly time frame. This is where we like to start our analysis. And you can see so far on the week, we are heading lower. It is off to a rough start, 2.12% to the downside here on the S&P 500. And if we look closely at the action on this weekly time frame, we can see we are right back to testing last week's lows and essentially giving up uh, the gains in progress made from last week at this time. So the next three days, how we close out the week, the way this candle prints here into Friday will be an important one to pay attention to. Right now, I would say this is a good battleground spot. Last week's lows, this 2717 area, all the way down to 2700 uh, is going to be a good kind of short term line in the sand to gauge just how interested sellers are to take this market back down, potentially take this market back down to the lows made just two weeks ago. When we look here at the actual weekly structure, uh, what we see now is that we had this no this nice uh, two, two week bounce that we got to enjoy off of the lows. We rallied about 8% from the very low tick of two weeks ago all the way up to the highs here. It was a little over an 8% bounce. And now we are down about, well, we closed up uh, about six percent on that bounce and now we're giving back another two percent so if you're bullish here uh, if you really want to see this market uh, take a stand then this is where you're going to want to start to see support come back into the market it's going to demonstrate that we don't we aren't ready to just roll right back over we're not in fact going to give back all of these gains very quick and just swing right back down to this 2600 area that the market is in fact seeing some increased interest in bids in this market this is where you're going to want to see us hold uh, the line and hold the defense to start putting in some some structure here of some type or higher low uh, and if you're on the sell side if you're bearish if you think this market's gonna roll over then this is exactly you know the lows here from last week could be an, a good you know trigger point for many uh, that they're finally starting to lose momentum we have this nice bounce up kind of back tested this trend line that extends from the 2016 lows and now we're starting to roll over and you know 25 33 the year-to-date lows is the next big target that's sort of the big broad spectrum of the two camps and two views of what they're looking for and you know the reality of how it pans out is probably somewhere in the middle and mixed and messy uh, and probably involves a lot of chop and zigzagging which is why we need to be careful not to um, you know really get turned up too much in some of this uh, in some of this elevated volatility in action so um, the weekly chart I think otherwise here uh, remains very much kind of same structure as we had last week. Uh, you know, we had this nice test up here. We talked about this 2815, kind of the highs made from the uh, back on the 19th was right up here around 20, 2816 or so. We ran right into that level last week. We pulled off a little bit and now you can see the market pulling back further. So that's a good line in the sand to the upside, 2800, 2816. And on the downside, we're still looking at uh, two weeks ago's lows, 2600 down to the year to date lows. So let's get a little bit closer here on the daily time frame. Let's switch over to my other view. There's a couple of other levels drawn here. And this is the short term action here for the S&P 500. So just as we just talked about, we ran and topped out around this 2816 area. We're starting to pull back now. Uh, we're at last week's lows, 2700, nice round number, but it has played an important role. Just look back here in July of this year. And if you go back further, it has been an inflection point for the market uh, over the course of this year. Notice it was exactly the low tail of uh, the 2nd of November and we do have an open gap still just underneath it so there's kind of a, a good amount of short-term confluence there or um, you know a, a general area where we would want to see again the market kind of hang in there if um, if you do want to see support come into this market, we're down four days in a row. So if tomorrow we're, we make it day number five and we kind of extend lower uh, and maybe overshoot a bit, fill this gap, it would be a good spot if you're tactical, if you're active to look for some of that rebound for that bounce action. Uh, not saying it has to happen, but it's a decent setup into it as we come a little stretched uh, into that short term area. Otherwise, uh, the way I look at this market, still very much the same until we take out this, these highs here around 2800 to 2815. 
or uh, the lows made two weeks ago around 2603. Uh, I have this level at 2590 drawn where there was a lot of structure prior in the year as well. Until we take out one of those extremes, uh, I would expect uh, really exactly what this market's doing, just chop and back and forth action. There's gonna be good performing individual stocks. There's gonna be lousy performing individual stocks and uh, you're gonna wanna pick your spots selectively not to get um, too uh, too chopped up in this market environment. So that's the way I'm looking at it. Um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, the VIX uh, back above 20. Uh, let's see if it closed there. Yeah, it did close back above 20 or so. Uh, so we got a nice little pop there. I believe it's back in um, backwardation now. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how long it can sustain above this 20 handle here. And um, you know, after after bottoming out around 16 or so, uh, and had a high of around 27, so very much like the S&P 500, kind of back into the middle of this recent range. So that's something to keep an eye on. I know a lot of people are watching this as a potential inverted head and shoulders pattern. Uh, very well could manifest itself to be that way. I see a lot of people talking about that pattern, which has me generally looking the other way or wanting to look at the other way. Um, you know, if everyone's looking at the same kind of pattern and eyes are on something, uh, as a trader, I think we always look um, to, to be suspect of that, but it could easily still pan itself out if we find support come in right around this 2700 area. Uh, gets a nice measured move all the way back towards recent highs into the year end. It is a nice, neat Santa Claus rally uh, or narrative, I should say, but uh, again, we'll have to see if that actually manifests itself. So that is the S&P 500. Uh, IWM here now, if we look on the weekly chart, this is uh, very clearly below last week's lows. This had a much more suspect weekly close last week. We had this big tail on the top end, really resembled what looked on the 19th, which uh, preceded some selling. And we are seeing that selling uh, pick up here, 2.31%. We're still holding on to about 40, 50% of uh, the rally here, or 50 to 60% of the rally made from um, just two weeks ago. So we aren't right back to the lows crashing down, but this is, again, just this 150 area is gonna be where we wanna see uh, this market hang in here in the short term to remain uh, you know, as optimistic as possible here. The NASDAQ 100, go to, oh, go to the weekly chart here. You can see we are uh, currently trading underneath last week's lows as well. Uh, and if we go down to that daily chart, we've already filled the gap here back from the end of October, the 31st of October. So uh, the market here really kind of just, um, you know, four days down, or I guess it actually closed higher today, just slightly. Uh, so kind of broke the trend, um, isn't four days down now, uh, but still kind of an ugly looking candle here. And we're gonna wanna see support step in uh, before we come back down and retest these lows. So that is the market overall, um, giving up a little bit of gains, still a mixed two-way trading market. I think you're gonna find opportunities opportunity on both sides of the fence here. Just depends how active and nimble uh, you're choosing to be in this type of environment. So let's jump now into some of the other major markets here. We'll go to TLT next, which is uh, comfortably sideways in this uh, new trend here. It did manage to hold on, the sideways trend, did manage to hold on to uh, the lows here. In other words, it made new lows, but uh, never got any follow through. And then it found it and popped it back up above the October lows here. So for now, TLT is saved. It is moving uh, slightly higher back up into this range. If it continues so, I would be, wouldn't be surprised to see this 115 retest in the coming days here. And if you are in this trade, if you are trying to be active, nimble, catching a bounce here, or maybe trying to catch the bottom here in TLT, then I think you have some pretty clear line in the sand to the downside around this 112 area. If we start making new lows, if we start losing these levels here, here, then um, you know I would want to respect that longer term trend which is still lower we go to oil uh, this is certainly the headline of today of this week uh, turning out to be maybe this past month or two, uh, USO continues to nosedive here and in fact accelerating today, looking like we might get we might be getting close to some capitulation here, uh, given the amount of volume, given how prolonged the kind of uh, straight down action was, and now we're seeing acceleration to the downside. Seems like um, some puking there to me. Uh, I'm not brave enough to necessarily jump in here and um, 
you know, want to be a hero, but uh, if you're active, if you're nimble, I got to imagine that you're paying attention here because there should be, you know, increased volatility right now and uh, that, that chance for some snapback, mean reversion if you're day trading, all that good stuff. Uh, it's certainly a market in play. When we look here at the weekly chart, you can see it is now going on its uh, sixth, seventh week in a row to the downside uh, from the very highs made um, to the lows made today. It's down about 29%, uh, 28.5%, and is pretty much as much of a straight line as you could uh, muster up. And that's just over a month of trading, 1.3 months of trading um, to, uh, per my per TC2000. So that is um, that is pretty ugly out there. Again, I don't think it's an easy short at all. I wouldn't want to be trying to jump on the short train now. And uh, again, the, the the knife catching is is uh, you know an art in itself. So uh, do your due diligence there if you're if you're um, you know, uh, attempting that, I should, I guess is a good way to say it. Um, but certainly a market in play. We'll see how it finishes out the week down 8% as it stands right now. No major levels. Uh, I mean, this pivot, this pivot low here from February, which comes in around 1165 in the USO ETF. Uh, but you're going to probably want to look at this uh, spot futures contract to get a little more accurate, but we're testing that right now. So maybe, uh, you know, again, maybe some capitulation into these February lows. We'll catch this. Uh, from holding and let's just see what it is on the year for the hell of it so it's actually you know surprisingly only down now 2.66 percent i mean that is certainly a shame uh given the fact it had you know 20 percent plus progress earlier this year but um it is not um it is not very deeply red at this point. And again, that's the USO ETF. So that uh, that is oil there. Pretty ugly action there. But oil's loss seems to be natural gas's gain, uh, which continues to accelerate to the upside here. It's very much an inverse chart for the most part. Uh, this has seen a uh, pretty fantastic run just in short time, uh, already up about... 30% here in the past uh, 14 days or so. So uh, pretty impressive action there for UNG. Luckily for us, because we do still have a long position here in natural gas. Thankfully, it's down to just uh, a quarter of our position. But like uh, mentioned in the last updates, just trailing a stop, seeing how far this can go. So uh, just trying to sit on our hands as best as possible, trail that stop, and uh, we'll see if it continues. It's clearly overbought. It's clearly due for some compression, some, 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 um, you know, consolidation through time or a pullback in price. Uh, but for now, momentum is clearly to the upside here for natural gas. And uh, we'll see just how far the bulls can take this one. So natural gas do remain long in that um, for a trade. Next up, uh, GLD. GLD here uh, on the week down 68 basis points. We talked about it in our Friday video that it was losing this 115 area. It was back in the suspect list to be uh, sort of a cautionary uh, environment for gold once again, that this big, uh, you know, kind of um, uh, trend here since the past couple of weeks to the upside, couple of months to the upside could be resolving in some big bear flag. Don't necessarily think that that has to be the case, but that is the concern now. That is the risk if you are bullish here in GLD. So be cautious. So far, we are are still above the year-to-date lows, 111. That's certainly where you'd want to see this hold. Better yet, 112, which is where we put in some more consolidation in uh, late, uh, or I'm sorry, early October. Uh, and for now, it is just trading in between, um, you know, kind of this this range that it's been in for most of this year. Doesn't look too actionable. Sellers certainly have the advantage. Silver uh, is getting close to breaking to new year-to-date lows. In fact, it did make new, uh, the SLV anyway, did make new year-to-date closing lows here. Uh, so this one looking much more vulnerable now as it uh, put in really kind of this uh, dis dis very, um, you know, kind of bearish looking continuation pattern to the downside here and uh, never really got a big bounce to the upside. It mostly just kind of levitated higher a bit, went sideways for a month or so of trading, and now it's starting to roll back over. So got to be cautious there um, in silver so long as we are below this recent consolidation and making new lows. So that, I think, uh, covers everything that I wanted to go over in this video. Hopefully you guys 
are um, staying sane out there in this market. Don't look too closely at it. Uh, these are times where I appreciate being an end of day trader so we don't have to stare at some of this volatility and um, whipsaw action that we're seeing out there. And uh, as always, remember you don't have to trade every day. So that is it for me. Thanks so much as always for watching. You can find and subscribe to these uh, updates on YouTube or head to our blog at The Trade Risk. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys on Friday.